far. Works. That works. Well, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I've changed my speech uh, probably 10 different times uh, this morning already because of the, of the great presentations. Uh, so here we go in 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, in, in, in this kind of fashion. I'm going to talk about, uh, about text that has to do with known problems, unknown problems, uh, knowable problems, and complex problems, and I'm going to ignore the chaotic problems. This is David Snowden's um, uh, two by two uh, way of looking at the world. I'm not, uh, what I'm not going to be talking about is uh, poetry, short stories, novels, uh, all that kind of stuff. I, what I've done with my uh, life uh, work, among other things, is to work with text in relatively stable, explanatory subject matters and their visualization. And then recently into messes and mega messes. Um, what's the problem? Well, for most of us, it's being overwhelmed by data. And as, and as Bill said uh, recently, having a, can, being unable to get through it and, and get, get through it, skim through it, uh, and scan it quickly and get to what we really need. The complexity of the data. This is what this is the kind of complexity that biologists uh, deal with in terms of our energy, and that's only the top half of the of the uh, diagram. Um, and then um, we also have information that's continuously changing. And the problem with text. Oh, okay. You're right at me. It's pointing at you. Uh, and and uh, the problem is that the alphabet is a funnel. And we've been thinking about thinking as scrolls. We scroll think. We chatter away one after another. Linear, 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 linear. So what can we what can be done about this? Because there's more and more information and we're overloaded. Well, let's look at some text for known problems. Here's a good example. It's a book, Essential Psychopharmacology. Now, that's a, a graduate course in, in uh, medical school or in our second or third year. You've got to have uh, some psychology. You've got to have some organic chemistry. You've got to have some biology before you get to psychopharmacology, right? Here's what the author said about it in the preface. Somebody sent this to me. Therefore, I it is suggested that novices first approach this text by going through it from beginning to end reviewing the color graphics and the legends for these graphics. Virtually everything covered in the text is also covered in the graphics and the icons. So I went around and asked some medical students at Stanford, uh, you know, what do you do with your big text? These, this textbook, I didn't bring it along, it's too heavy, to, it's a big one like this. What do you do? They say, oh, we look at the graphics. We never read the text. Well, uh, here's what... The, one of the graphics in that book looks like. Uh, recognize that there are 538 diagrams like that in 62 tables. And that's the kind of, that's only one course. That's probably a, a I don't know, a 10 week course or something like that. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna to talk to you about, a lot about uh, the integration of text and visual elements, because that's something that I've specialized in a lot. But first, I want to first I want to mention that um, uh, for text all by itself, or text with minimal um, graphic elements, uh, in the area of known problems, that is, we know have the methodology for doing it. We solved that long ago with structured writing, um, and. Uh, there we figured out that we can sort all the important sentences, all the important sentences of a subject matter, any subject matter that's relatively stable, into about 40 categories. The categories are these. You can't read them all. We have trained 400,000 people to date, approximately, in how to do this. Um, I did a lot of that work 
um, and it really handles all subject matter. And just to uh, cover that, we covered all the government domestic programs for 20 years. And in a book which, uh, if you want to follow up on that particular idea, uh, I brought along a, a display copy of it. So we, we, there must be a table somewhere we can put it on. Oh, God, there's too much junk here on the I know. Um, table. Uh, and I also brought along... Uh, Okay, I brought another one, which has to do with more lyrical, more more philosophical essays that were that can be done with the same sort of structured writing, which enables you Bill to skip and skim uh, through all the subject matter and skip what you don't, what you already know, and 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 find what you don't know. Done by carefully labeling the subject matter. Okay, now text for knowable problems. These are problems we don't necessarily know the the answer to yet. Um, and there I applied that approach, the structured writing approach, plus visualization. Uh, five minutes. Oh, good heavens. All right. That's an example of one. Those are the categories into which you would sort all the information. It's in, uh, it's in chapter whatever, uh, seven, I think, there. Now, for, for complex, messy problems, we have a new language of the 21st century. Visual language, which is the tight integration, the tight integration of words and visual elements, where words do what they do best, that is, text does what it does best, and the visual elements do what they do best. Yep. I recently uh, Googled uh, infographics, 71 million results. And part of the problem here, of course, is the, the, this continual multi-multi-challenge. There are so many multiple dimensions to any conceptual thought that we really have to we have to really dig into this. And I'm sorry, it's not simple, folks. It's not Wordle or that kind of stuff. Get over it. It's complex. Um, and finally, uh, with my last four minutes, uh, three, <laughs> we, we have a, 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 basically a new genre of analytic information murals, uh, we, with this, which this gives you a, a suggestion of. Those are the, the visual elements of uh, a, a, a mural that I did for, uh, on nuclear waste disposal for the United Kingdom. Uh, it has, it's about 15 feet long. It has about 350 verbal chunks. It has about 250 visual elements that help you uh, either show the relationship or navigate around. It has 40 must-haves. Oh, no, this is a different one. Okay, 40 must-haves and 70 measures of success. Now, recently, there are messy, or what uh, Kenan called uh, uh, fuzzy, containers and problems. Uh, I've been working with calling them social messes and I've got a recent book uh, that uh, deals with those, the text and, and, and visual elements and those kind of things. I brought along one uh, there. Now, I've been thinking about putting these, these visual elements and text together for quite a while. So uh, in, 19, in 2001, the National Science Foundation had a conference on which they called Integrating New Technologies. And I, was, I was one of the 40 people invited. And it was, it was also called the InfoCogno Nano Bio Conference. And I, I did a future of, of the future of visual language over here. Uh, I'm happy to discuss it with anybody there. Uh, some of the things that we, you know, I would have gone through if there was time, but there isn't. So uh, we can talk about it together. And this is the new technology that I've been waiting for for 25 years at the University of Illinois in Chicago. It's a screen which is 26 feet wide, six feet high, and it's interactive. I had 20 of my information murals in little postage stamp size uh, icons over at one side. I could hit one, it would go whoosh right up there. You could from your your uh, laptops, put information up, we could change it around and so forth. That's one of the futures. Uh, 
And the other future that is how do we understand the fusion, the semantic fusion of words and images? Really interesting topic. So, thank you very, very much. I, it, <laughs> 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 and uh, just in case what you, you, you wondered what visiting was in, the, in my title, uh, here's the topic. So. We have one or two minutes for questions, and now you have to remember that after break, please be really, really prompt. Uh, questions, please. Yes, Mark. Uh, well, since you uh, brought up Doug Culkin, um, perhaps his most uh, famous phrase is uh, we shape our tools, and thereafter, they shape us. Um, what would that tool you're talking about do to the people uh, who are using it? How would it shape them? Uh, well, I'm going to talk about the, you know, there are several tools there. I'm going to talk about the, the, um, uh, the information mural. It helps uh, uh, large group, uh, collaborative groups have a, lot, have a context and, and be able to pull together things together that they can see and, have, have, and, and, and keep a memory of it together. How does it change their attitudes and behaviors? How do they become a different state? What, what does that technology do to their state? It illuminates them. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for squeezing all that in. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got a cough over there, and I, and I have hearing aids, so it really amplified. Oh, all right. Um, my question is, how would you take these infographics? Uh, what steps have would it take to make them? an interactive form of uh, collaboration and sense-making among a group of people, because uh, it's clear there's quite a bit of artistry involved in, in yeah. doing it. Um, yeah, uh, well, I'll use just one example of 15 or 20 different kinds that, that we have, uh, and that's the mess mapping process, which I think of as a group process where people uh, collaboratively, collaboratively build a picture of a, of a social mess or a wicked problem uh, before they even try to solve it. And uh, the, the, the visualization creates an artifact which helps them deepen their understanding, taking it back to their organizations, since we work with lots of organizations in that sort of situation, uh, to uh, get, get implementation ready Get, get, because it's discussed back there, but, and then they come back and over a period of, of weeks create this. So, uh, in I, the I process, we'll have to take it offline. We're all right, then. All right. Thank we, you very much. Paul.